Hi, I'm Jenny. I've been working in groups ministry for 16 years, and in all of those years, I've learned that the most important things about group are authentic community and spiritual growth. Today, we're gonna to talk about spiritual growth, what it is, why it matters, and how you grow. So first, let's talk about what spiritual growth is. The Apostle Paul gives us a good definition of spiritual growth in a letter he wrote to the people who made up the first century church in Galatia. These people had begun arguing with each other about which religious rules they had to follow in order to earn God's approval. Paul set them straight in his letter and he said, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Just like the Galatians, we're sometimes tempted to think spiritual growth is about doing all of the right things. After all, we live in a world that rewards performance, so it makes sense that we'd think spiritual growth is that way. But the message of Jesus is that God wants a relationship with us. When I learned this, it completely transformed my faith and my life. For a long time, I lived like God would only love me if I did what He wanted me to do. I knew in my head that wasn't true, that Jesus had given Himself up so that I could have a relationship with God, but it was hard to accept that truth in my heart. Something in me wanted to earn God's acceptance instead of receiving it as a gift. I can understand how the Galatians got confused. The idea that God would accept me through Jesus, even though I didn't deserve it, sounded way too simple. But it really is that simple. It's just not easy. When Paul wrote about faith, he meant trusting God, just as we trusted God with our salvation. He also wants us to trust Him with the details of our life. God wants to grow your trust or faith in Him. That means stepping outside of your comfort zone, sometimes in big ways, but more often in small ways. It means saying, God, I choose to trust you even when I don't understand. That kind of obedience isn't about earning God's acceptance. It's a way of saying thank you because He already accepts you. So why does a growing faith matter in your everyday life? Well, God wants His relationship with you to spill over to other relationships. A little later in his letter to the Galatians, Paul wrote this, The entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Our relationship with God isn't just about God. God shows us generosity, so then we're generous to our neighbors. God offers us grace, so we in turn show one another grace. God forgave us, so we forgive others. God cares about our relationship with Him, and He cares about our relationships with other people. So let's pause for a moment and clearly define spiritual growth based on everything we've talked about so far. Spiritual growth is a growing faith in God validated by a growing love for God and others. So how does faith grow? Okay, let's get practical about what it really looks like to pursue a growing faith. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people about their spiritual lives, and we've picked up on some common themes when it comes to spiritual growth. So I want to introduce you to the five things God uses to grow our faith. Private disciplines, practical teaching, providential relationships, personal ministry, and pivotal circumstances. Let's start with private disciplines. These are things like reading the Bible and praying. They give you the opportunity to spend time with God. The more time you get to know Him, the easier it is to trust Him in your day-to-day -day life. Not only is it a good idea to read the Bible and pray on your own, it's also important to engage with practical teaching from sermons, books, videos, or podcasts. All of these can give you unique insight into how the teachings of Jesus apply to your life. Everyone's faith story involves other people. Providential relationships is the third way God grows your faith. Think about someone who has impacted your faith. For me, it was an older neighbor who helped me think about my faith, or lack thereof, in a new and different way. Maybe for you, it was a family member who used to take you to church, or the first Christian who didn't leave you feeling judged. You've had relationships that have changed your life for the better. And just like other people had an impact on you, you can have an impact on other people through personal ministry. God is up to things in the world. Personal ministry is your opportunity to use your time, talents, and even your story to play a unique part in the big things He's already doing in our world. Lastly, nothing causes your faith in God to grow like the joys and challenges of life itself. Pivotal circumstances you face, large or small, good or bad, are opportunities to trust God. And every time you trust Him and He demonstrates His trustworthiness, your faith gets bigger. If you look at those five things as opportunities to grow your faith in God, it really will change your marriage, friendships, finances, and work. 
They have the potential to improve every area of your life, so pay attention to them. Be aware that spiritual growth is an ongoing journey that plays out one step at a time in the context of your everyday life. Any step forward is growth, and every step forward is progress. We hope this group provides lots of opportunities for you to take a step of faith. Even this week, we hope your group discussion helps you recognize the next step in your spiritual journey. And as it does, take that step. It'll be worth it. Now we want you guys to spend the rest of your time talking about spiritual growth. You can use the questions in your discussion guide to get the conversation started. But before you go, here's what's coming up in this study. At your next group meeting, you'll spend time getting to know one another. If you're intentional about building friendships at the beginning, it will make this group even better in the months to come. There's an about me exercise in your guide that will help you plan what to share with the group. Now, don't worry, you won't tell your whole life story. The goal is to let each other know about some key people and events that influence who you are today. At the next meeting, your group will begin sharing your stories and your group leader should go first. Know that there won't be time for the entire group to go, so if you don't get to share, you can finish up in your next meeting. Now, it's time to discuss today's content. Enjoy your conversation.